Hello, everyone. Happy New Year. I'm wishing you a successful and prosperous new year. Today's video is a little different than previous videos. The last week or so, I've been going over events in 2019. And in the last couple of months of 2019, there was a white van kidnapping panic that was viewed on Facebook. Afterwards, news platforms everywhere began to dismiss reports of white vans attempting to lure children throughout the U.S. Now, as I went through media reports of claims from people and children in numerous cities who were either approached by a white van or was confronted by someone in a white van. Now, I have some clips of stories involving white van possible abductions and you decide if there's something more sinister going on or are these just random occurrences. Taken captive, allegedly beaten inside a white van. Authorities moving in after a dangerous chase. Here's ABC's Steve Osen Samming with the details and the chilling scene they discovered inside that van. Authorities north of Birmingham tonight are sharing this police body camera video showing the end of a wild police chase where they arrest an accused kidnapper and free his alleged victim. Inside this beat up white van is the woman who was held at knife point on Sunday. She was bleeding and screaming for help. Police negotiated for more than half an hour and were able to get her out first. Still inside is the man police are identifying as Sean Sanders, who was not giving up easily and had to be tased. We were just terrified because we didn't know, you know, whether he had a gun, whether he's going to be shooting or what. Witnesses say he tried to drag the woman into the woods and was stopped by a man from a nearby church who followed the van and called police. I didn't have all the facts. The only thing I did know, I wasn't going to let him leave without the police checking it out. In their report, police say the van had a cage in the back, wire cages over the windows, with blankets covering the inside. The doors were also chained shut. The city's mayor says Sanders is from Los Angeles, was homeless, and was living out of his van. Sanders is in jail tonight, facing kidnapping and attempted murder charges. The woman who was rescued suffered more than 30 blows to the head with a tire iron and is at home. I'm feeling really good. I'm just, I'm glad they didn't take me. He says two days ago, this van pulled up to him near his house while he was getting ready for a water fight with friends. He mumbled the first time, and then I go, what? And he says, get in, get in. And I go, what? And then he goes, get in the van. Parton, who had two friends standing nearby, says he was so shocked by what the man said, he just stood there, frozen. I thought he was probably gonna, like, maybe abuse me or like kill me possibly, but we, we were all really scared. Fortunately, as another car drove up, the van took off. It's terrifying. Um, we moved into this neighborhood because of it being family oriented and um, uh, safe. Jennifer Parton says a neighbor's doorbell camera confirmed her son's story, telling Fox 31 the video was hard to watch. It made me worry about the younger ones. Um, would they have made the same area? This happened around 8 o'clock yesterday morning near 87th and Crandon. That's in the Calumet Heights neighborhood. The 13-year-old girl was on her way to school, and she told police two men got out of a white panel van that had a silver roof rack. She says both were wearing ski masks, and they were dressed in all black from head to toe. They grabbed her backpack and tried, her, tried to pull her to the van, saying, come here. But she was able to break free in the process, breaking a strap on her backpack, and she ran to school. Now, parents at Thomas Hoyne Elementary received a letter home yesterday alerting them of the investigation, and detectives were out knocking on doors looking for information. Look out after someone tried to abduct two little girls. Police are specifically looking for a white cargo van similar to the one on your screen. Earlier this week, officers got a report of a van matching that description heading down Moreland Way near Jonesboro Road, Old Jonesboro Road. The two girls told police officers they were walking home from school when the van passed them and then backed up. That's when they say the driver hopped out and chased after the little girls. The driver then got back into the van and left. Now get this. The two kids say the van had a cage or a fence behind the driver's seat. The police say a driver tried to coerce a teenage girl to get into a van, 
Police say this happened on Elementary View Drive. It's not far away from Huck's Road in North Charlotte. And Eyewitness News reporter Tina Terry is live for us there tonight. Tina, police have increased patrols in that area. Yes, we have seen patrol cars periodically going inside of the Hux Landing subdivision here. They are still helping neighbors here feel safe after that girl was terrorized over the weekend. This is a neighborhood where kids walk freely each day. So when neighbors heard about a near abduction this weekend, they were shocked, then angry. It's, it's horrible because we've got a lot of children in this neighborhood. I have a daughter that's 13 years old. As a father, I, I can't even imagine. We're told that 15 year old girl was walking on Elementary View Drive Saturday just before 5 p.m. and said that someone pulled up and tried to coerce her into his white van. But she ran off toward a group of kids and an adult helped her call 911. The driver got away. Her. Yeah, the same thing happened in three other towns, too. Police are telling parents and kids to be on the lookout. News 8's Bob Wilson, Life Force in Hartford tonight with the latest on that hunt. Bob? Yeah, right now, police in Reading are working with three other police departments because they believe this guy is so active. Not only once, but twice. Police say he approached kids in two different towns. Police say it happened this morning in Reading on Churchill Road, and then again 40 minutes later in Norwalk. A young girl in middle school was waiting for her bus when she was approached by a man in a white van. She turned and ran home, and the parents called 911. It was very smart not not to engage the person in, in, you know, in conversation, and you know did the appropriate thing so we could investigate it. It didn't take long. Police put out word to the school, and they alerted the parents, and pretty soon many in the town knew what to look for. A white van with a ladder rack on top and no ladder. The exact description released by police is a white work-style van, a ladder rack with no ladder, dirty but in good condition, and the last three digits of the license plate are CVW or CWV. It's alarming. It is, especially when you hear white van, you know, chasing a kid down the road. Yeah, I mean, any any kid will be would be scared, you know, frightened. I mean, boy or girl, you know, having somebody just slow down, roll their window down. Police say that it happened about 8.30 in Reading. 40 minutes later, there is another 911 call in Norwalk. Same thing, same color van approaches a young girl offering her some candy to get in the van. It also happened in Danbury and then again in Bethel over the last couple of weeks. That's pretty horrible. Looking for him, they're also looking for the victim. And CBS 2's Jasmine Veal is live in Silmar right now. And Jasmine, you're going to show us the, this video. You also spoke to the witness who recorded it. Yeah, that's right. And this all happened around this time yesterday in broad daylight. And the man who lives in that home captured this frightening ordeal on his security camera right there on the fence. Police now very lucky to have that video and another piece of critical evidence in finding this woman. I had just pulled up in my car and then I heard a commotion going on. Luis Alas just happened to be home yesterday afternoon when he heard a woman arguing with a man on the other side of his fence on El Dorado Avenue in Silmar. I just heard her hit me yelling, get in the effing van. And then she was like, no, my mom's gonna pick me up. And she yelled that out a couple of times. And what he saw minutes later on his security camera, even more disturbing. Grabbed her by the hair and threw her inside. He immediately called 911. The video begins with the woman in her mid 20s to 30s walking on the side of the street around 12:30 p.m. A van abruptly tries to cut her off. As she crosses over to the other side, the light blue Chrysler pulls up beside her once again. A heavy set man gets out and they start arguing. Another woman remains in the passenger seat. After a few seconds, the man opens the van sliding door. And as she starts walking away, he grabs her by the hair and yanks her toward the back, roughly throwing her inside. Regardless if you know each other, you don't force somebody in the van like the way he did to her. And watch as a beer bottle the woman was holding is tossed out the window by the front passenger. No doubt a critical piece of evidence for police to fingerprint. Allah says he does not recognize the van or anyone in this video, but at least was able to alert police about this crime that no one else might have noticed. Now looking into these 
possible fan abduction stories, I found accounts from some women who believed that their Uber drivers was possibly attempting to abduct them for sex trafficking purposes. There was also some talk about people um, who participate in sex trafficking or um, human trafficking or things of that nature that they were going from or pedophile rings were going from the white vans to Uber drivers. Um, that's debatable. I don't know, but that's just the talk that as I was going researching that um, many times that I would see. So upon listening to these stories, you know, you can't help but to think that there may be validity to this notion of Uber drivers procuring women for sex trafficking. So here's some clips regarding some of those tales and um, I will be back. I was now working on a project with, you know, Neen and Michelle is just whatever I was feeling. I had been feeling that way for the past few days. And some of you may have heard me mention that I was supposed to go to a brunch yesterday and then this party. Moving forward to what happened when I left the party. I took an Uber out there because it's like 40 minutes from where I live. So I took an Uber to the event and I called for an Uber to pick me up. The Uber driver came to the location of where I was. One of my guy friends saw me getting in the Uber and he was like, don't get in that Uber. He was like, I'll take you home. Like, why? Like, don't get in that car. And I'm like, it's all good. I've already, you know, it's already paid for. So I'm going to, you know, go ahead and leave, you know. And I was like, but I, I didn't have his number. Like, I call him a friend, but I always see him at this spot whenever I go. So I said, just out, just give me your number and I'll talk to you the entire way until I actually, you know, get home. And he was like, okay, I got his number. So the Uber driver was looking at me, just turning back around. Smile. I had on a like a fitted, like it's called a tuxedo dress. So I had on this tuxedo dress, kind of cut open in here, and it was a short dress with some boots on. The guy started slowly pulling off of the lot. But I'm looking at my phone. My phone is not showing me that he has actually even picked me up yet. And I said, hold up. I said, it's not showing on my phone that you have picked me up. I said, and I send my location to my family whenever I'm in an Uber. I don't give a fuck who is picking me up from an Uber. If it's a woman, if it's a man, I always send my location to my brother, my kid's father. I don't give a fuck. Oh, even when I'm traveling. So the guy looked back at me. He was like, Huh? I said, ain't no fucking huh? I said, why haven't you started the fucking trip? I look up at his phone. His phone is in the holster. The little thing that you have to have, whatever. The screen is black. The screen is fucking black. And he had his phone to the side. And I said, why is he, I said, why isn't your phone on? He didn't respond to me. And I said, push the fucking button on your phone so I can see that your phone is on. Do you guys know that this nigga tapped his fucking phone and the screen was black? His fucking screen was black. He had never fucking accepted the trip and I am in his car. He started driving off out of the lot and he, we get on the street and I said, stop the fucking car. St like, stop the car. You, stop the car. He touches his phone at the bottom of the screen. And when he touched the fucking screen at the bottom, the nigga phone powers on. Do you know that I had to fucking jump out of a goddamn moving Car. car started acting up so her dad told me to catch a lift and leave my car there and he would fix it for me so i called the lift got in the car with the lift 
notice that they were taking all these different turns no major streets was not following the gps that they were supposed to be following so i asked the guy i said why are you making all these turns you know this not the way to my job and he wouldn't answer me he kept on just driving so i'm noticing that i'm going down these different sidewalks these neighborhoods i'm so no nervous like i can't even really talk so i'm asking the guy like why are you turning here this is not the way to my job so he kept telling me to be quiet be quiet be quiet like hold on i know what i'm doing so he pulls up behind this other he pulls up behind this other car like a big truck i don't even know what it was so i'm like just nervous because i'm on the phone the whole time and i wasn't paying attention the whole while that he was making all these turns so i asked him why don't you go around this truck why you just sitting behind this truck like this i have to get to work and then he wouldn't answer me so a black guy got out of the truck he had braids in his head and everything and he started opening the gates to this warehouse or whatever it was and was telling the car that i was in the lift driver to back into the warehouse or whatever so i'm like what are you doing you know like this not the way that you're supposed to be going so, to my job so i'm telling y'all to be safe out here i had to get out the car and run i was in a lift i have all his information and everything i was riding in a lift car trying to get to work because my car was acting funny i called the police and everything i'm still waiting on the police i'm safe i'm waiting at a gas station um I Pero kayo yung nasa ban. Kailan pa kayo simula yun? Pero marami kayo, marami kayo dyan. Tapos yung sumusama po ako sa kanila. Ngayon, yung lumakal ka, dalawa ka. Nasaan yung isa? Sandali, nakapinibidyo ko. Sandali, may nagsasalita isa. Could this be the reason for so many kidnapping abductions of women and children? There are an estimated 15 to 50,000 women and children who are sexually exploited each year in the U.S. There are also the issues of satanic cults and pedophile rings who could be responsible for the large number of kidnappings per year. This is the first video of many during this year where I will explore reasons why women and children are being possibly targeted. So until the next time we meet, thank you so much for watching.